Right guys, today I'm gonna show you how to create this AI glow search animation inside After Effects. I'm gonna lay out all the source for the deep glow, shape morphing and the sound design at the end. Go to the top and select the rounded rectangle tool. Create the AI prompt box with these values. Duplicate the layer, deactivate the fill, enable the stroke. Now this step is key, go to the top, click on the name, stroke, change it to a linear gradient, modify the values. I went with this violet pink look. After you press OK, you will see these two handles. Just make sure they're on the left and right side to get this clean gradient look. Grab yourself a microphone icon. I got it for free on the Noun Project website. The microphone will be placed on the right side of the project box and for the left side create a text layer then type a plus pick the font career regular make it gray then make another text layer write ask ai anything make sure this text is left aligned and for the font pick proxima nova regular before I start animating the prompt box add the deep glow effect exposure is at 0.05 add the cc light sweep effect the center is at zero direction is also zero width is 200 sweep intensity 49 and the edge intensity 50 edge thickness 4 keyframe it it's at the top left go forward a few frames and then put it on the top right so it's a full sweep over it right click on it duplicate it remove the keyframe and put the center exactly to 365.9 and 299.9 the direction to minus 70 this gives it this clean gummy look and the width has to be 225 sweep intensity 50 edge intensity 50 and edge thickness 4 now to animate parent everything to null object flips in the z rotation from 5 to 0 to flex and add the bounce to it and the x rotation is also keyframed from 90 to 0 because at the ending i also flip it in the other direction so it's a loop i added a delay in curve I animated the plus icon using a fill goes from pink and then to the gray the final color a fast blocks blur from 1 to 0 in the same duration and the scale from 22 to 50 so it jumps up and I applied the flex bounce also the rotation so it spins from 20 and bounces to the side opacity from 0 to 100 you just have to do this once then you can copy the fill the fast box blur and the opacity paste it also onto the mic just change up the scale so it fits and rotation in the other direction so it spins cleanly. And for the text, I used my text plugin, pressed shift, left click on it, sliced all of them per words, applied it. The Y position is also animated, so it comes from down upwards, copied it onto each of the layers, select everything, and then staggered them descendingly. They build up from left to right. The click animation, parent the null object to a new null object. It's always important to make a new null object. If you would do everything on one null object, it would conflict with each other. It's a much better practice to do it like that. Keyframe, the scale and the X rotation, also again a 3D layer. Rotation to minus five, so it flips back and change the scale to 95. Go back and make sure it's on zero again. Select all the keyframes and add the flex bounce onto it. And to get this color switch effect just went back onto the outer box added the color balance saturation keyframe it so it goes from zero to minus 100 when it's on the deepest point and then goes back to when it drops back make sure to cut with shift command d all the text layers off make a new text layer write whatever prompt you want to replicate the same typewriter look at the end make a capital i zoom into it change the height of this t to 150 and then drag it down so it's positioned in the middle of the text. Go to Animation Composer. This will save a lot of time. Write Type Right and then Last Character Blinking. Animate In. Create a new null object for the transition to move to the left. Keyframe the X position, Y rotation and the Z rotation. Go forward, change the X rotation so it's out of bounds on the left side. The Y rotation to minus 90 and the Z rotation to 3. Apply the flex bounce for the other ones, the snap out easing. And this Z rotation where I apply the bounce onto, it plays a crucial role into the next part of the animation where the text AI selector comes in. Because what this does, it shifts it slightly to the left side and drags it to the side. And then when the text selector animation comes, I shift to the other side and then it bounces in and goes to the side, basically like a shake. All right, the next part is the AI text selector. Make a text layer. Always make sure all of them are 3D because they will all be transitioned in 3D space. Proxima Nova Medium. And then when you want to make something bold, I used bold. It's left aligned, position it at the top in the middle. Edit my profile picture next to the name. Make sure the picture is rounded. Create a shape layer with 150 roundness. Place it over the picture. Parent 
the shape layer to the image and on the image itself select the track mat the shape layer duplicate the text the bullet points one one point for the youtube it's the same strategy as before make it proxima nova medium the url medium italic so that is for the plugins and for the project files and these line breaks you have to create them manually type it out and then press enter so it's all clean and lined up perfectly the text we just created make sure to parent it to a text null object then go at the top, select the rounded rectangle tool, draw over the top text a highlight selector, remove the stroke and use this violet color, change the opacity to 15. Open up the shape layer, go to the rectangle, press on the size, disable the chain so you can enable the shape morphing, keyframe it, go to transform, keyframe the X position and Y position. Go forward a few frames, change the Y position so it lines up with the next text the sizing go to the next one and make sure everything lines up properly i always go through at the beginning and make markers on each of the points where the song has a snare or a hit so it's all synced up go into the speed curve and line them all up exactly on the point now when you get that all set up properly we need to finish the transition of course make a null object parent everything to it make it 3d keyframe the x position y position and the z rotation the z rotation is now at minus 7.5 the y rotation at 90 and the x position on the right side so the prompt box goes to the left text selector comes in from the right and the z rotation apply flex bounce so now it has this really clean look and shakes from left to right i really like this look it fits perfectly to the beat of the music and other two values slap the snap in easing onto it to spice up the transition a little bit i added fade ins for all the text so you want to select everything that's not selected by the selector mask the glow behind it select one until the last bullet point go to animation composer and type in fade cubic select it and press animate in click on the multiple presets and then shift markers drag it back so it's much much faster press three times on the stagger ascendingly really clean reveal in from top to bottom all right, now I'm gonna explain the shape morphing source and how I exactly did it. So the text is also parented to the null object for the in, where it flies in from the right side. And this null object is parented to another null object, which makes the click. And the anchor point of this null object is very important. It's in the middle of the mark at the end. And here I have the scale and Z rotation keyframed. Apply the flex bounce onto it. The Z rotation, you want to change to 5, the scale to 88. So it goes down, clicks in, and takes everything with it the text, the icon, and also the mark. And then goes back again into its original state. And then when you parented everything together, make the click animation, go back to the mark, keyframe the size, X position, Y position, and the opacity. Also, the color changes from violet to white. Then go forward and scale it up so it's a rectangle. And I applied the delay in curve. How I animated the profile picture is also very sick because it goes from its original position also in a new position. And I keyframed the Z rotation on the same time frame as the box rotates, but it rotates even more. It rotates to 50 and also goes back into its original state. Keyframe the X position, Y position and the scale. Go forward and place it in the final position on the same timing. Added that delay in easing. Then I went ahead and recreated the YouTube UI with all the right text. It's Arial as a font and different. It's either bold or regular and either black or gray or the blue one for the link. The same way, go to slice, slice it per words, animate it exactly how it is in the beginning. This is really the source. If you make this once, you can just copy and paste it onto all the new text layers, stagger it descendingly. And to spice it even more, I've added a shape layer behind it, 20 roundness and these sizes made it gray and added a text on top vt323 added the url so it's basically the ai is going to the youtube and then it shows the link all of these layers have the mark as the track mat and then click on this button to reverse it so it's only visible outside of the mark and then keyframe the y position added the snap in easing gets revealed over time for the ending i went ahead and shaped morphed the mark again I keyframe the size go forward and made it 16 by 9 YouTube format, added the smooth in easing, took the Airbnb commercial YouTube video, and in the pre comp went ahead, selected the shape morphing mark to it, so it's only visible inside the shape layer, went ahead and recreated all these UI elements from YouTube manually. To get these icons, go on the Apple website and download the SF Pro font. So you don't even have to download the icons, you just have to go on Figma, find the designs, 
for example, the X, when you have a YouTube player template, command C, command V, and then you have it inside After Effects as a text layer. And I did the same for the speaker icon and also the skip animation in the ending where it goes 10 seconds forward. They include all the iOS icons inside the text font itself. And also make sure all these UI elements have the mark shape morphing shape layer selected so all the ui elements are only visible when they are inside the shape layer. parented everything to a null object at the top also key framed the scale applied the flex bounce onto it and this makes sure that the whole ui also gets warped down from 100 to 95 and then to 85. went back took the text with the shape layer i did here with the url copied it and applied the same over the YouTube video when the After Effects interface comes up and changed it to the name of my YouTube video, how to animate an ABB commercial After Effects. And it's also parented to the null object, reveals the name of the video that's playing. Then to fade everything out, and keep in mind this null object, everything is 3D. Every single layer has to be 3D here. Keyframe the X rotation, go back, make it minus 90. So the last frame, it flips backwards and then the prompt text based at the beginning flips in the other direction. Get this clean 3D flip animation. Now I'm gonna break down the sound effects and this really sources up the full animation. Very good source to find unique sounds that are not mainstream, that fit extremely well with UI. Grab these sounds or similar ones. This is soft interface pop-up in the beginning, the interface. Then I use this phone typing effect, change the stretch to 75, 25% faster. Took another software interface pop-up, reversed it so it builds up and then when it presses, it comes in, but in reverse. Now the next one took a little bit more finesse because I wanted the exact sound effect where it's basically typing and it is the back type sound effect. Cut it out, so this is only the typing. Fits exactly when he types, when it comes the first letter, until it's finished. Make sure the sound effect is one second longer and it taps at the end so it's completely synced up and represents what's really happening in the motion. This sound effect I went through and there are some of them when he goes, clicks on the back button and I added them one in the middle where it goes back here and then one at the end and this matches really well together. You have to combine multiple sound effects, cut out a few parts, change the time stretch. This is really the source for high quality sound design. It's also important to go through the sound effects and press command, scrub through. On the highest point, press right click, markers and add a marker so you always know where it is and then you can exactly line it up on the points that you made in the beginning. Here I just added some basic whooshes. Go on the time stretch and change it to 150 to slow it down, especially on the whooshes. It sounds really nice. Here for the transition I added a whoosh where it changes the scene again. The next one is reversed. One final whoosh where it transitions into the YouTube UI. Grabbed the iOS iPhone iMessage sound. Next one is from Epidemic Sound 2, a pop-up notification interface software sound reversed it because you have to imagine these are not real objects these are all motion elements shape layers flying around but you just have to imagine it what would fit the best plops whooshes ui hut interface clicks it all matches very well with these animations duplicated the typing sound to add some variation went to time stretch and changed it to 88 so it's a little bit faster now this next sound effect normally it goes downwards like this but i just went in reversed it and now it builds up then I also added plop here when it transitions to the YouTube UI. This is just a simple mouse click. Last one is just a simple base hit. I changed the time stretch to 150, so it plays slower. Everything that's over 100, it's slower and under 100, it goes faster. If you're interested in this product file, check down the description on my Patreon. If you're interested in my plugins, check it out on the website, ebedefair.com. Bye guys. Bye.